Yeah, a little, a little history. I had bladder cancer, uh, and um, in gosh, six six years ago, six years ago, I had my bladder removed, right kidney, prostate. Uh, we couldn't find our car keys, and the ch our Chihuahua vanished. <laughs> uh, nobody told me, but they told my wife I had about a year to live. It's interesting. Had I been told that, would I have been the willing accomplice of the self-fulfilling prophecy? Who knows? But Anne replied to the surgeon, you don't know Beav. And it has been six years. I was stage four. It was in my liver. And my oncologist refers to me as his miracle patient because I had the most aggressive form of bladder cancer with about a 2% 2 survival ch uh, chance. So every four to five months or so, I get PET scans and CAT scans. So all of a sudden, I don't get any phone calls. And suddenly a letter arrives at home, at home. No phone calls, no nothing. We have voicemail, answering machines, you name it. Our telephones at home and at the office record all the numbers, shows who called or the number. So call to hang up, but still a number of registers. Nothing since May. And a letter shows, arrives at home. Poorly written. The English was not good. Uh, dear Hart, my, my actual legal name is Hartley Dennis Beaver. So it was Dear Hartley. We tried to reach you several times and ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. please call. The envelope in which this letter came was handwritten poorly, wasn't the line, so nothing, what you, you would assume they would know how to, <clears throat> pardon my voice, we have f wildfires around, around town here. You'd think they would know how to use a, um, a, the computer to print an envelope, no way. So I phoned the, the, the person, her name was Bada Bada, initial L, no last name, and talked to her. Why didn't I get a phone call? Oh, we, I, I called you. I tried calling. When did you try calling? She gives me dates. We never got a call. Never got a call at home or at the office or on my cell phone. You have all these numbers. Oh, I'm telling you, I tried. Yeah. How about an email? Oh, oh we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that. Right. Now, it's important to be on top of, of cancer, right? It could come back. Probably not. It's probably cured. Hopefully, hopefully. But the incompetence of this was absolutely stunning. So what is hell going on with this country? Why, why can't high school graduates write, have a sense of language, grammar? You know, that's what led to my writing, both of you, and, and expressing my frustration. Uh, what's happening in the medical system right now is Algorithms are driving many, many decisions, administrative decisions and medical decisions. And, and, and once a, a, uh, an issue came up in your case and an algorithm couldn't solve, a, the human being who was charged with solving it couldn't solve the problem. And not only could, could that person not solve the problem, she made the problem worse. Th this young lady who contacted me, She's a gatekeeper and sometimes the lowest level person in an organization is critically important in this case to patients and to the image the organization radiates to the world. Dennis, let me ask you a question about your case. At, at any time did the agency or that person ever apologize for creating the frustration they created? No, uh, and in fact, I even, sent an email to one of the executives there. Very, very nice lady. I left, I left her a voicemail. Here's what happened. You know, this, this, is, this is, does not make me happy. And I sent her uh, an email kind of summarizing that. I've not heard back from anyone. And it is a superb facility. In okay. fact, the, 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 um, one of the head physicians there when he, first came, when he first came to Bakersfield, 
years ago. I had a talk show, a Saturday morning radio talk show. I had him on twice with, on a first time relationship uh, basis. And uh, great, great guy, had great treatment. I saved my life. And I told in the email, I said, You, I, I said, I am here today because you were there for me yesterday. That was my closing line in the email. You know, when, when we when we talk about communication, there, there's an assumption that it's about grammar and syntax and spelling and word choice and vocabulary. And obviously it, it is about that. But one level above that, which is what what really differentiates those who succeed versus those who don't, is understanding context, understanding the situation, understanding the person who's going to be reading the message or listening to the message. And what I'm hearing and seeing from my colleagues at the university and what I'm reading in uh, the, the relevant papers, there's a huge deficiency, not just in the basics of grammar and syntax and spelling and vocabulary, but in the nuance, nuances of, of understanding context, the, the scenario you, you, you presented, Dennis, is, is the combination of pure group, pure grammar and foundation principles, but also context, the situation. Mm -hmm.